All right, here we go. Hey, everyone. Um, yep, I'm at Allstate. I, I assume they're hiring as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in uh, Northbrook, Illinois. Yeah. Insurance, that's quick smell. Uh, insurance is actually more in interesting than you think, so I don't know. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, yeah, so I want to talk about here about uh, data science. I'm like a, uh, a researcher in their sort of innovation hub they've got in Menlo Park down on um, Marsh Road. So I look at a lot of plots, I read a lot of research papers, and I like complain a lot about plots. So <laughs> this is not, I'm not gonna be like telling you what terrible plots are, embarrassing people. I just wanna try to go back to the basics, talk about the fundamentals of what we wanna do with a plot, what should it do. So I'm not trying to insult anyone's intelligence here. We're just gonna talk about plots for like 10 minutes. Yep, so I've already started on the philosophizing. Um, it's about the first half. Second half is uh, the Jupyter Notebook, and the third half might be some, some uh, examples. So let's get going. Um, what are some great plots? Let's like start you know, with, so this is um, the Higgs boson, won the Nobel Prize, and this is like a pair of plots that basically show what they found, right? So the story they're telling here is, Okay, we've got this p-value, which is our indicator of how likely is it that this happened by chance. If this p-value is very small, it means you found something real. If your p-value is one, it means you just have some random fluke in your data. So what they're showing is you've got this dip here, and down there, if your p-value is 10 to the minus six, that's one in a million. So the chances are you found the Higgs boson and you're happy, right? That's, yeah. And then there's a whole bunch of other garbage that you'd have to ask a, like a high-energy physicist, right? But that's the main story of here. Uh, here's the second plot I want to talk about, uh, gravitational waves. I believe these guys are also going to win the Nobel Prize for their discovery. And again, this is basically, in one plot, I'm showing you what like took decades of work from thousands of researchers. And what we're seeing here is basically the real data overlaid with the expected numerical result. So decades of work on numerical relativity gave you this sort of expected in spiral pattern, and then decades of work on this detector gave you the real result, and then you overlay the two, and you find a match, and you celebrate. So that's basically the story of this plot. So far, so good. And uh, I should mention, like, these guys don't even, they, they use uh, this plotting package called root. Um, these guys, I believe, this is matplotlib. It looks a little nice for matplotlib, though. I'm a little suspicious. <laughs> yeah. OK, so plots tell stories. Um, and this is going to be the third story from this philosophizing. All right, so what are we looking at here? We've got calculated joint temperature in degrees Fahrenheit on the x-axis. Scale is 60 degrees, 70, 80. OK. And then what do we have here? We have number of incidents, 0, 1, 2, 3. And they've put a scatter plot up, right? What do we see? So what are, what are we looking at here? It looks like basically there's no pattern, right? Is that basically what we're seeing here? There's for, as you change the temperature, you have the same number of incidents, namely one. Okay. All right, well, now we've, we've added some data to this plot. We've added the case of zero incidents to this plot. And now we see, oh, this is up on the higher range, right? So for higher temperature values, we have zero incidents. For lower temperature values, we're seeing cases of one or two. Right, so these data is actually the O-ring data from the Challenger disaster, right? And so we're telling completely different stories based on the content of the plot, not based on whether you're using ggplot, matplotlib, plotly, right? It doesn't matter. The, what matters is what's in the plot. And so that's what I'm, I'm trying to convey here. That's really what we should care about, and that's why you should use matplotlib, because it gets the job done, right? 
Uh, okay, so what am I at? Oh, this is another recommendation. If you're doing slides, give uh, of, of a total so you know I'm almost done, right? <laughs> Seven or eight. Uh, all right, so what do we want in a plot? We want a title, right? Because the title tells you what this thing is. We want labels on our axes because it tells you what they are. And importantly, we want units on those labels so we know how many widgets you're selling. Are you selling millions of widgets, billions of widgets? You know, this is like a lot of money, right? It matters. And then, of course, same for the X. Um, and again, also, the scale matters, right? You should, if we go back to those previous plots, the scale is really important. So you should think about that. Don't just like throw it out and say, job done. You should sort of think about all these aspects and make a beautiful plot, tell a good story. Oh, uh, caption. So if you remember those first two plots, they had this huge caption, right? Like text and text and text describing what's in it. And the idea is if you have a plot in something that's meant to be read or like printed out in red, it should really be independent. I mean, think of this in, in functional terms, right? If you're writing programs, you basically want things to be independent. And plots should stand independent of the text. So someone should be able to ignore everything you've written, dial in on your plot, and fully understand what's going on. This is actually what people will do. So like professors in a field with lots of experience, your manager's really busy, they're not gonna read all your report, they're gonna probably look at the couple of key figures, see what's going on, and like give you a rubber stamp or something, I don't know. Um, any questions about that? Cool. Um, all right, so matplotlib. I came from a, a MATLAB background, so it was very natural. When I couldn't pay for MATLAB, I go to Python, and I start using matplotlib. All is great. Um, the thing that I miss most is this graphical interface that you get in Mat Mat uh, MATLAB where you can tweak it, tweak your plot, you actually see it, whereas here you just have to re-execute code. Other than that, you're pretty great. Um, it's self-contained, so everything you need is sort of in it, which is really cool. If you've ever tried to plot, like with LaTeX, it's a disaster. It was like dependencies, and you have to install this stuff, and it's not fun. Um, the API, I mean, this this is an old language, the old thing, right? It's 20, 30 years old. The API is well known. It's cherished, but it's also very weird. Um, so that's the con. Integrates well with pandas. I use pandas all the time, so that's great. Um, plots look good. They don't look great. So I say good enough is good enough, and I call it a day. Um, as I was like, you know, going back to the content is really what's most important. Not really like the LaTeX rendering and typesetting stuff, right? We just want a plot that's good enough, that works, and then we can go on with our day. So that's about it for that. Um, let me just show you some code. How am I doing on time? Four minutes, great. Uh, all right, so this is my 10 minutes to matplotlib. Can everybody see it? Cool. Um, so let's just start going. So I, this is basically how I work every day. I'm just pulling out a Jupyter notebook, download some data from the internet, and then I like open it up in pandas. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I can make some plots. Okay, so this is basically just the default plot. And you can see I've, I've read this into pandas, and then I just call the plot function and it spits out a matplotlib plot. And, you know, if I'm doing this myself, I would say job done, right? I've, I'm looking at my data here. I'm looking at um, sunspots going, you know, all the way back, you know, like 1700s. So I, I don't know why people were counting sunspots, but they were. <laughs> so we have all this data going back hundreds of years. That's cool. Um, and one cool thing is if we do that, take out the legend, which you don't, we don't need. That. So this is cool. What I've done here is before is that box. Now it's more square, so I've changed the aspect ratio. 
And this is something from um, the uh, elements of graphical plotting. I have a book here I can show you guys if you're interested. But what's kind of cool is now we've sort of limited the slope. But before they were you know, very vertical, and now they're more horizontal towards 45 degrees. And that actually tells us some new information that we can see here. What we can now see is that they rise more quickly than they fall. Can you see that? It's rising and then it's falling more slowly. So before, with the more square aspect ratio, you couldn't see that. Whereas now that we've sort of scaled everything down around 45 degrees, you're getting more information from your plot. So that's a tip you can use. <clears throat> so that's like the main way I do plots. It's just using um, pandas. And then, so I'm using pandas, and then I'm just throwing in this PLT, that X label, and it just overwrites stuff. It's really cool. All right, so now we're, again, doing some plots. Um, the other way you can make a plot is do, you know, plt.figure, say what figure size you want, um, set the X limits that way. And then what I'm doing here is the second way. There's like a million ways of doing things in matplotlib. One way to do it is to get the current axes and then set properties of those axes. And that's the way that works. And it's got a built-in tech render. So that's kind of cool. You don't have to install LaTeX. That's neat. And my final plot here is I'm looking at, uh, let me just show you the code real quick. Just set up another plot. This is like the third way you can use matplotlib. You can set up a subplot, pull out the axes, and then plot into the axes. So that's kind of hopefully straightforward. I don't know. There's tons of examples online. Hopefully I've convinced you that it's worth your time to learn it. And then you get this kind of plot where we're sort of looking at correlate, uh, the correlation over time. And if we bump down here, um, the scale here is years. So we see this maximum around 11 years, which is what we'd expect. And we're happy. That's about it. Thanks. Cool questions for Rory about Matplotlib. Mark, OK. I'm allowed to ask a question. Do you have any um, recommended like introductions or overviews of Matplotlib's API? Because it is very strange, as you said, and the tutorials are very, it's like they're disjointed, or a lot of the examples are disjointed, so it's hard to see like a cohesive view on that API. So do you have any recommended like documentation? Mm, yeah, um, it's a problem. I totally <laughs> buy that. Um, I would spend a little bit of time just Googling like Matplotlib examples. Okay. That's by example is really the best way to go. Okay. Like they even say that in documentation. Just find a plot that you <laughs> like and copy it. <laughs> <laughs> they do say that. <laughs> Thank you. Along those lines, you can see like a couple of different ways to set up a map plot right? Mm -hmm. Sort of the thing where you have the maybe the built in and then build up the graph versus. There's a, a couple of different ways you map plot lib or a state machine where you build up your graph uh, versus sort of a more object-oriented way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Could you comment on when to use one over the other or, or what? Yeah, I mean, I think one time you, like this, uh, I'm sort of like up here, like this first example, I'm really going you know, fast and loose. Like this really shouldn't work at all, right? Like what the heck is going on here? This PLT somehow figured out what like Pandas was doing. So if you're doing this programmatically, like this is not, the interface you want, because you're probably going to get all kind of ex unexpected results as you stack up um, figures. So that's where you probably want to go down into like the more manual, like setting up um, individual axes and figures and working that way. So what's happening there is it's using global state. Uh, like there's one global figure that you are adding stuff to. And okay. then you have to, when you're done and you've rendered <laughs> it, you reset it. Is cool. that right? Sure. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I try not to ask too many questions about Matplotlib. <laughs> so you said you used MATLAB before. Uh, is Matplotlib like very similar to MATLAB? Yeah. Okay. Um, you have the same kind of paradigm of a, a figure, and then within a figure you have um, axes, and then within an axes you can plot like a line plot or a scatter plot. And so that's that's the paradigm has been borrowed here from MATLAB.
decimal code binary yeah uh do you use do you use stuff like uh seaborn to make it look nicer do you ever do that yeah um yeah it's just import uh seaborn and it sort of does its magic behind the scenes mm -hmm. or you can also just use the matplotlib style uh gg plot mm -hmm. if you want to use that you know sure. looks great any other questions about matplotlib all right then round of applause please